In Creo Parametric, you can use a statistical design study in order to calculate the yield for a component in terms of the number of standard distributions and the defects per million units for a variety of different distributions for a complex tolerance analysis. All right, there's a lot involved in this. I'm going to use four videos in order to get to the point of calculating the DPMU, the defects per million units, and the number of sigmas in the yield. This is really some involved functionality that you have in Creo Parametric. And so this is the final result that I'm going to get to. In this first video, I'm going to use MathCAD in order to calculate the standard deviations for the critical dimensions in this part. In the next video, I'm going to create some datum analysis features for calculating the critical height of the spring that, I that I'm going to use in this scenario. Then we'll create a multi-objective design study in order to perform the statistical design study. So again, there's a lot involved in that. Let me go to a clean model to start off from scratch. All right, here I am in my part model. It's very simple. There is just one extrude feature. I will left click on it and then from the mini toolbar, here we have the edit dimensions command. I will click on that. And in this spring, you can see that there are a variety of different dimensions, but the two critical ones for our statistical design study are this length dimension and this angle dimension. In this scenario, this spring has to have a certain height and the height has a certain tolerance. So these two dimensions affect that height calculation. So I wanna see the tolerances associated with that. I have the tolerances display command added to my common tab. In another video, I show you how you can add different commands to the common tab. But if you don't have it added there, you can go to file options. And then inside of here, let's go to what is it, entity display? Yeah, entity display. Here we can control the display of our dimensional tolerances. Let me change this to show all tolerances and click the OK button. I'm not going to change my config.profile, but now when I go to edit my dimensions, you can see the tolerances for the different dimensions. So for the length dimension, it is 3.5 plus or minus 0.1. And here we have the angle dimension. It is 23 degrees plus or minus one degree. So I want to figure out what the standard deviation is for the length dimension and the angular dimension. The standard deviation is going to be one of the inputs to the statistical design study. So how can I calculate that? Well, you can use MathCAD. Let me go to the Applications tab. Here we have our PTC MathCAD command, and I can choose to open or create an embedded worksheet in order to perform that calculation. Let me click on open or calculate. Here it brings me up in my version of MathCAD. The latest one I have is MathCAD 8.0. Let me start off with some information about what this is. I'm gonna throw in a text block. Let me go to text formatting and change this to be center justified. And this will be my standard deviation calculations. And that's good. And I'm going to start off with some other documentation of the basic formula that I am going to use. And this is going to be for the rate of capability, which I am going to use as the variable C with a with an underscore of the letter p let me go back to the math tab here's where you can specify that you want a subscript be aware that the keyboard shortcut is control and the minus key so i'm going to use a subscript of the letter p and then to indicate that this is a documented calculation i like to go to the operators tab and here we can use the equals to which is the one for the comparison I'll use this one. C sub P is equal to the upper tolerance limit minus the lower tolerance limit. And I'm going to use the space bar to select everything. And this is going to be divided by six times sigma. And you can go to the symbols drop down list if you want to grab sigma from here. 
but you can also use the letter S followed by control G to convert it to its Greek equivalent. So I'll type in the letter S, then control G. And so this is the formula for the rate of capability. Let me put in a text box to indicate that. Rate of capability formula. And you can see from here that sigma is in the denominator. I actually want to calculate sigma. I want to calculate the standard deviation for those different dimensions. And so in a lot of situations, your C sub P, your rate of capability is going to be a value of one. So let me define that. I'll use the letter C and then control minus and letter P and then the definition operator, which I can get to from the colon key. This is going to be a value of one. I'm going to start off with that as my starting condition. Now let's create a function in order to calculate the standard deviation. And so the sigma S control G as a function of UTL and LTL, the upper tolerance limit and the lower tolerance limit. This is going to be defined as being equal to UTL minus LTL and all of this divided by six times C sub P. Let me use control minus to type in the C character. And so now if I enter the different upper tolerances and lower tolerances, I'll be able to calculate the standard deviation for those two different dimensions. So let me do the length dimension first. I like to put in a lot of documentation. So for the length calculation, the length, and then I'm going to use control minus UTL, the upper tolerance limit. This is going to be equal to 0.1 as I specified before, 0.1 as we saw in the model, and then length, and then control minus for a subscript. The lower tolerance limit is equal to minus 0.1. Next up, let's go to the angle dimension. Let me put in a text box to capture that just so that someone reading this later on will understand what this pertains to. I'm also using really good names for the variables. The angle and then control minus UTL. This is going to be equal to one degree. I'm just going to use the number one. And then let's create a second variable. The angle control minus LTL. This is going to be equal be equal to negative one. All right, so let's calculate the sigma for the length dimension and then the sigma for the angle dimension. So let me use S control G sigma as a function of length control minus UTL comma length control minus and this is going to be equal to, or this is going to be the lower tolerance limit, and then hit the equal sign. So this is the standard deviation of the length dimension. Let me scroll down a little bit. Let me calculate the same thing for the angle dimension. S control G, open parentheses, angle, control minus UTL, comma, angle, control, minus LTL, this is going to be equal to 0.333. So there we have our standard deviations. I can retroactively assign this to a variable. And so I can use the colon operator and I can say that angle standard deviation so that I can pass it back to math or to my Creo parametric model. Let's do the same thing for the, oops, this is actually the length dimension. Length standard deviation. And then let's do the angle standard deviation. And then we can evaluate these once more. LSD. I was not thinking in advance. I did not expect that to come up as the abbreviation. So let's uh, then evaluate ASD. This is going to be equal to this value. If I want to pass these values back and forth 
from MathCAD into my Creo parametric model. Hey, we can designate some inputs and outputs. So let me go to this one here. This is one of my inputs. I can sign this as an input, assign this one as an input. Anything that has a definition operator can be assigned as an input coming from Creo parametric. I'm not actually going to pass values back and forth from Creo parametric to my MathCAD worksheet. I'm just showing you how you could do that if you wanted to. Let's assign this as an output, assign this one as an output. If I click on show in list, here you can see the different uh, variables that are going to be passed back and forth. And so for the outputs over here, let me change these. The first one is going to be the length standard deviation. And this one is going to be the angle standard deviation. There we go. And so now that everything has been done in my MathCAD worksheet, this icon here is normally the save icon, but when you have an embedded worksheet, this is the save and push. Click on that. The save and push was completed successfully. That's great. Let's get out of MathCAD. And now if you take a look in the upper right-hand corner, here we have the little MathCAD icon that indicates that we have an embedded worksheet. You can click on this to access that embedded worksheet. If I go back to, let's say, my model tab, I can go to my parameters from the model intent overflow. I access my parameters so often that I have the parameters icon also in my quick access toolbar. I highly recommend that you edit your quick access toolbar for the stuff that you go into. And here are the different part model parameters. If I go to the drop down list, here we have embedded MathCAD. And here we can see that we have our angle, lower tolerance limit angle, upper tolerance limit, length, lower tolerance limit, and then upper tolerance limit. And these are listed as inputs. Here we have the angle standard deviation and the length standard deviation. These are listed as outputs. I can use these different parameters from the embedded worksheet either to drive model geometry. The outputs can be used to drive model geometry or I could use the different inputs. I could assign them to different dimensions in the model. So that's stuff that I could do. I'm not actually going to do it. I just cared about those two different values, the standard deviations for the angle in the, and the length. I'm going to use that later on. So that completes step one, calculating the standard deviations, which I did via an embedded MathCAD worksheet. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.